Okay, this chapter is going to look at two different types of shapes. These are properties of trapezoids and kites, chapter 7.5. The essential question are, is, what are some properties of trapezoids and kites? Recall the types of quadrilaterals shown below. So a trapezoid has a set of two parallel sides. So this first trapezoid right here, two parallel sides, but then two sides that are not equal in length. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid with two parallel sides, which are called bases, and the legs are congruent. And the kite is a four-sided figure, quadrilateral, with two congruent sides, and then another pair of two congruent sides, but they're not opposite each other. So what you will learn is how to use properties of trapezoids. Use the trapezoid mid-segment theorem to find distances. Use properties of kites and identify quadrilaterals. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at what the book is talking about here. It says, using properties of trapezoids, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral four-sided figure with exactly one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides are called the bases. Base angles of trapezoids are two consecutive angles whose common side is a base. So, so the base in one and base two are the parallel sides and the angles that are at the ends of each parallel side, if you will, are the consecutive angles common side of as being a base are called base angles. So A and D are base angles and B and C are also base angles, but you wouldn't say B and A are base angles because they share a leg. A trapezoid has two pairs of base angles. For example, in the trapezoid A, B, C, D, A and D are one pair of base angles and B and C are the second pair. The non-parallel sides are the legs of the trapezoid. If the legs of the trapezoid are congruent, then the trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so the only difference between these two is A, B equals C, D. They didn't label this A, B, C, D, but we could. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. Okay, example one says to identify a trapezoid in the coordinate plane, show that O-R-S-T is a trapezoid. O-R-S-T. Then decide whether it is isosceles. So the first thing I would do is I look at this right here. This is a vertical line right here. And obviously this is not vertical, so they're not parallel. What we wanna test is parallel lines. So if I go up and let me see, let me do this, do this, do this. And so I'm looking at this side and this side. Now we can't assume anything. And if it's, you can't say that, it oh, it looks like they're parallel. So I'm going to say they are. You have to actually decide mathematically if they are parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope of RS. So I'm going to just over here, I'm going to say slope of rs equals, and it's y2, so here's rs, y2 minus x2, I'm sorry, y2 minus y1, 4 minus 3, 4 minus 3, over x1, or x2 minus x1, 2 minus 0. So it's 4 minus 3 over 2 minus 0, which equals 1 over 2. So the slope of RS is up one over two, and that's sure, that's for sure. So now I'm going to check OT. So I'm going to say the slope of OT equals Y2 minus Y1, two minus zero over X2 minus X1, four minus zero, which equals two over four, which equals, when we reduce it, one over two. And since these two are equal, then I now know RS is parallel to OT. So it is a trapezoid because these two sides are obviously not parallel. ST is not perpendicular, or it's not uh, straight up and down uh, parallel to the Y axis because OR is, is on the Y axis. So I know it is a trapezoid now, but is it an isosceles trapezoid. So now I want to know how long RO is and how long RS is. So I'm going to find the length of them. So the length of RO 
since this is vertical, zero and zero, we don't have to worry about that. So R O equals the absolute value of Y minus Y. Oops. So the length of RO, since it's vertical, I can just do the distance as an absolute value of the change in the Y. And on this one here, though, we have to do the distance formula. So ST is going to equal the square root of the difference of the X's. So two, Y2 minus Y1 or x2 minus x1, 4 minus 2, and then 2 minus 4. So st is going to equal 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. So st equals 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. So st equals the square root of eight. And with that simplified, eight is two times four, and two times two is four. So I have a pair of twos that becomes outside, and then my leftover stays under the radical. So obviously RO is not equal to ST, and therefore it is not an isosceles trapezoid. So this is, just a, a trapezoid, but not a nice oscillus trapezoid. So now you should be able to do problem numbers three and four in the exercises. Okay, so now we have a few more theorems here. Theorem 714, isosceles trapezoid base angles theorem. If a trapezoid is isosceles, okay, so two pairs of, or a, one pair of parallel sides, and then the legs are congruent, isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So in this diagram, if trapezoid A, B, C, D is isosceles, then angle A is congruent to angle D, and angle B is congruent to angle C. Theorem 715, isosceles trapezoid base angle converse says if a trapezoid has a pair of congruent base angles, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. So if AD if angle A is congruent to angle D, or if angle B is congruent to angle C, you only need one pair, because you if you, these two sides are parallel, this is, hmm. if this is parallel to this, and you're given this, and these are congruent, that's an isosceles trapezoid, because the base angles are congruent. Isosceles trapezoid diagonals theorem. A trapezoid is isosceles, okay, if and only if the diagonals are congruent. So if you do not have an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals will not be congruent. One will be longer than the other, okay? So if you have a trapezoid and opposite sides are parallel, and then you mark the sides congruent, if you check and AB is congruent to CD, then you have legs congruent, and that's an isosceles trapezoid. And when you draw the diagonal BD and draw the diagonal AC, they will be the same length. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at some problems that involve these theorems. Okay, example two, using properties of isosceles trapezoids. The stone above the arch in the diagram. Okay, so this is an, a zoomed in of an arch. The arch continues, and then they made this stone bigger. The stone above the arch in the diagram is an isosceles trapezoid. Find the measure of angle K, M, and J. We were given angle L. So what we want to focus on is this is a trapezoid because this is parallel. KL is parallel, parallel to JM. And obviously these two sides are not parallel. They're coming closer together as you go down. But they're congruent. So we're told that this is an isosceles trapezoid. Angle L is 85 degrees. So if I go back to this new theorem, okay, a trapezoid is isosceles, let's see, 
then each if a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. Theorem 714. So this is a trapezoid, and angle L, it's an isosceles trapezoid, and angle L is 85 degrees. So since it's isosceles, I can say the measure of angle L equals the measure of angle K. So since L is 85 degrees, then I can now say the measure of angle K is 85 degrees. All right, and then when I look down here, I have J and I have M. Now, if you have two angles, remember this is a, there's a different couple of different ways to look at this. Um, S equals 180 times N minus two, or if you're familiar with N minus two times 180, it doesn't matter. And so then it's 180 times four-sided figure minus two. So the sum of the interior angles is 180 times two, which is 360. Quick review of earlier chapter section. So the sum of all these angles is 360, but these two are 85 degrees. Let me change back to red. It's easier to see in this diagram. This is 85 degrees. This is 85 degrees. So if I already have two of the angles and I know the, I can do it that way. I can say the measure of angle J plus the measure of angle K plus the measure of angle L plus the measure of angle M equals 360 degrees. And I know that K is 85 degrees. And I know that L is 85 degrees. I can find the measure of angle M and the measure of angle J. Because the measure of angle J equals the measure of angle M, they are base angles. I can say X plus and then add these up 170 degrees plus X equals 360. I guess that'd be X degrees. Then I combine my like terms and I get two X degrees plus 170 degrees equals 360. And then subtract 170 from both sides. Then I get two X equals zero nine uh, one. Divide both by divide both sides by two, I get X equals 95 degrees. So the measure of angle J, since X is 95, the measure of angle J equals the measure of angle M, and they both equal 95 degrees. So K is 85, L was 85, J and M are both 95, okay? And so now that this, Problem has been done. You should be able to do problem number seven and eight in the exercises. Okay, using the trapezoid mid-segment theorem, recall that a mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is a segment that connects the midpoints of its legs, okay? Not the parallel sides, the legs. So this is a leg, that's the midpoint. This is a leg, that's the midpoint. Draw a line between the two, and that is a mid-segment. The theorem below is similar to the triangle mid-segment theorem, which says the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base. Okay, so since AB is parallel to DC and you find the midpoint of both legs and draw a mid-segment, that mid-segment will be parallel to both bases. If MN is the mid-segment of triangle of trapezoid ABCD, then MN is parallel to AB, and MN is parallel to DC, and MN is one half the sum of the two. Okay, so here's the key to this theorem. It's parallel, the, the mid-segment will be parallel. And it's also half the, it's the average, if you will, of the two bases, one half AB plus CD. Well, if I add AB up to CD, add them two and divide by two, you're finding an average, right? Add two things together, divide by two, you get the average. So the mid segment is basically the average of the lengths of the two bases. So let's take a look at some examples there. 
Okay, example three, using the mid-segment of a trapezoid. In the diagram, segment MN. Segment MN is the mid-segment of the trapezoid. PQRS, find the length of MN. Okay, so we already know since it's parallel, I'm sorry, since it's a mid segment, it is parallel. So this MN is parallel to PQ and it's parallel to SR. And if I go back real quick, because it's a new one, it's right here. MN is one half the two sides. So I'm going to write the formula. So I'm going to say MN equals one half parentheses PQ plus RS. Okay. Always write a formula. Substitute the givens. MN equals one half. The length of PQ is 12 inches. Plus the length of RS is 28 inches. And so MN, now we simplify, is one half of uh, 12 plus 28 is 40 inches. And half of 40 is 20. So MN, let me rewrite that. So MN equals 20 inches. Okay, so it's just, and the way to check this is to get from 12 to 20, to get from here to here, I'd have to add eight. And then, so if I added eight to get to my, to get from the length of PQ to the length of MN, then I should have to add eight to get from the length of the mid segment to the other base and 20 plus eight is 28. That's just a quick little check, okay? 12 plus eight is 20, 20 plus eight is 28. Okay, so now you should be able to do problem numbers nine and 10. Okay, example four says using the mid segment, find the length of the mid segment YZ. Using the mid segment in the coordinate plane, find the length of the mid segment YZ in trapezoid STUV. So they're telling us it is a trapezoid. So if, if they're saying it is a trapezoid, then we can, we can already confirm that SV is parallel to TU. We don't need to check to see if they're parallel. We're told it is a trapezoid right there. So then we're told that this is a mid segment. So I need to find the length of SV. So SV equals the square root of, and I'm gonna set up my little formula. Okay, and you sub subtract difference in the X's. So SV would be uh, X2 minus X1 is two minus zero. And Y2, minus y1 and then simplify so 2 minus 0 is 2 squared plus 2 minus 6 is negative 4 squared so sv equals the square root of 2 which is 4 plus the square root of 4 which is 16 or i'm sorry four, negative 4 squared which is 16 so sv equals the square root of 20. I'm going to simplify that. So I'm going to take 20. I'm going to do a factor tree. 20 is 2 times 10, and 10 is 2 times 5. So I have a pair of twos. So SV equals 2 square root the left over 5. Okay, so there's SV. Now I'm going to find the length of TU. So TU equals the square root. Okay, 12 minus 8, 2 minus 10, TU equals the square root of 12 minus 8 plus 2 minus 10. So TU equals 4 squared plus 8 squared. So TU equals 64 plus 16 is 80. So then I do a factor tree for 80. 80 is 2 times 40. 
which is 2 times 20, which is 2 times 10, which is 2 times 5. A pair of twos and a pair of twos. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of my left over 5. Okay. All right, so now we have the length of the two bases. So the length of the mid segment, yz, equals one half sv plus tu. So sv, so then I substitute in what I found over here with my distance formulas, one half of sv, which is two square root five, plus one half, uh, tu, which is four square root five. Whenever our radicals are the same, we can add the number outside and just keep the radical. So it's going to be one half of two plus four, which is six, whoops. What am I writing there? Not, not a radical, a parentheses. One half times two times two plus four, which is six, and then square root five. Well, one half of six, I can then multiply that one half times six. So yz equals one half of six, which is three square root five. So yz has a length of three square root five. Okay, so now you should be able to do problem numbers 13 and 14 in your exercises. Okay, using properties of kites. A kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of congruent or consecutive congruent sides. Okay, so that's the key here, consecutive. This side is congruent to the side consecutive to it. So they share a common angle. These two sides are consecutive because they share a common angle and they're congruent. Okay, but the opposite sides are not congruent. So this side right here isn't the same length as this side. Opposite sides are not congruent. Okay, theorem 7.18, the kite diagonals theorem. So it says if a quadrilateral is a kite, then the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, so they form a 90 degree angle at the intersection of the diagonals. So you can say if quadrilateral ABCD is a kite, then segment AC is perpendicular to segment BD. Okay, um, theorem 7.19, the kite opposite angle theorem. If a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. If the quadrilateral ABCD is a kite and BC is congruent to BA, then angle A is congruent to angle C. And angle B is not congruent to angle D. So it has one pair of congruent sides and it's between the two different sides, if you will, not between the two congruent sides. So those are the two theorems for kites. Okay, so here's example one, or five, I mean. Finding angle measures in a kite. Find the measure of angle D right here. Okay, so I notice this side is congruent to this side. So I'm just going to state all this because it's new. DE is congruent to EF. Okay. I'm also going to point out that these two congruent markers show that DG is congruent to FG or, or GF either way. Okay, so those two sides are congruent. So by the theorem right here, kite opposite angle theorem, okay, we can state that since DE is congruent to EF and DG is congruent to FG, this is a kite. It follows that the measure of angle D equals the measure of angle F. Okay? That still doesn't help us. Well, it does, but it doesn't give us the answer yet. But we do see that the measure of angle E is 115 and the measure of angle G is 73. This is a quadrilateral four-sided figure. And going back to this S equals N minus 2 times 180, where this is a four-sided figure. And we simplify this. I'm just doing this real quickly one more time. 
then S equals 360, which means the sum of all the angles interior are 360. So the measure of angle, so now I can say the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F plus the measure of angle G equals 360 degrees. It is a quadrilateral. The measure of angle D, we don't know, x degrees. The measure of angle E is 115 degrees. The measure of angle F is equal to D, so I can call that x degrees as well because of this right here. Plus the measure, or, or plus 73 degrees equals 360. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. 5 plus 3 is 8. 7 plus 1 is 8. 1 plus degrees equals 360 degrees. Subtract 188 from both sides. And these cancel. And I get 2x degrees equals 2, 7, 1. Divide both sides by 2. And x equals 8, 6. So the measure of angle D equals the measure of angle F. And they're both equal to 86 degrees. OK, and so that's the answer. All right, so now that we've I've done this for you, the um, two problems that are in the exercises are 15 and 16. Okay, example six, identifying a quadrilateral. What is the most specific name for quadrilateral A, B, C, D? <clears throat> okay, so here we have A, C. A, E is congruent to E, C, and B, E is congruent to E, D. That's all we're given. So the diagram shows that. So I'm going to say AE is congruent to EC and BE. Actually, should I, since I'm using congruent, segment BE is congruent to segment ED. Okay. So since the diagonals bisect each other, right? Since this is equal to this and this is equal to this, since the diagonals back bisect each other, then quadrilateral. Oops. is a parallelogram. OK, so since the diagonals bisect each other, I know that BC is parallel to AD, and AB is parallel to CD. I don't know the measure of angle ABC or any of the four angles. I don't know the lengths of AB or BC or CD or AD. So I cannot determine if this is a rectangle, rhombus, or square, but I do know it is a parallelogram. So the most specific name I can give for this quadrilateral is parallelogram. Okay, so now you should be able to do problem numbers 21 and 22. Okay, so that brings us to the end of chapter 7.5. So here are the exercises I want you to do. So go to it if you haven't already, and thanks for watching, and have a great day.